Hey everyone, I am doing something a little different this time. Uh, it's a speed paint, but I'm talking over it. Woo! And I'm just gonna kind of try to explain what I'm doing. To be honest, line art is a bit hard to explain. I just kind of do it. So, uh, I normally draw my panels by hand, but I had a hard time with it for some reason, so I just did the rectangle tool. And I, you know, doodle a little bit. Try to understand what, exactly what I'm doing before I actually put the lines down. Right now I'm drawing Tony. I know the sketch underneath it says that he's not Tony, but I changed his name. It's Tony now. I uh, see I draw a lot of lines. Uh, after I did other lines, I ended up having to erase. Uh, in most cases with that, I would actually draw it on a different layer and then um, go back to the layer underneath it and erase those parts so it's a, so I can make it a bit more seamless. But sometimes I don't. Um, I took I take out his nostril. It just didn't look right. Almost too realistic. Because for the cartoon aspect, uh, the sketch, I made his body a little bit too long. So I go back and now I'm trying to figure out what it's supposed to look like. The legs are bleh. Um, I do fix it in a moment. But these are supposed to be children, so their bodies are small. They're kind of, their legs are kind of lanky. And, um... What, the reason why I designed Tony to look like an adult, even though he's a child, he's supposed to be like, um, if you've ever watched Kids Next Door, I think that's what it was called, Codename Kids Next Door? It, yeah, whatever. On Cartoon Network, like 10 years ago or so, uh, number one, the, you know, they're all kids, but... Number one was always very um, adult-like, even though he was only supposed to be eight or so, eight or ten. And that was the kind of feel I was going for. Like, very mature, but still obviously, or not, or less obviously, a child. Um, I did a pathway. It's supposed to be a pathway, but it doesn't look right. So I eventually I take it out. One thing I do want to point out is that when I draw the the grass, the horizon line in the background, there's no tangents. Like, and what I mean by that is that the straight line going horizontally across the panel does not come in contact with any other horizontal lines in its pathway. This allows for a more clear um, look, more professional look, and it's less messy. Take a sip of my coffee real quick. Hold on. Now I'm in the second panel, and trying to get a feel for how this one looks. This character is named Billy. I changed his name as well, and he's also a child. He's supposed to be dopey. Tony's more of a recurring character. I did him, I drew him the first time in a comic called Stank a long time ago. Thinking back to it, that comic's a little cringy now because it's um, a little... like there was no point to it. It's three pages long, but there was no point to that comic. And the punchline, there wasn't really a punchline, so it wasn't that funny. Um, so Tony is going to be a recurring character, but Billy's not, which is why I'm making him look a little generic. Um, I give him circles for hands because he's supposed to be like the chubby kid at Golden Corral who sticks his whole hand into the to, into the chocolate fountain and then licks it and then puts his hand back in there. He's supposed to be that kind of kid. <laughs> um, he's bald, but. Decided not to draw out the hair. He's sweating a little because he's nervous. Um, I go back and get rid of that path because it just didn't look right. And here, 
you can see I'm trying to fix the tangent. I'm adjusting to make sure the horizontal lines don't meet any horizontal lines and I end up moving Billy up so he's more pushed back into the scene and he doesn't um, you can kind of infer that Tony is walking up to him even though you never see them in the same panel um, here I'm just saving and adjusting it takes a moment and then going back to Tony Tony's design encompasses um, a few things a greaser style which you can tell by the pompadour the sunglasses and the outfit in general he wears you'll see in the coloring video later that he wears a leather jacket and he has jeans with the cuffs rolled up at the bottom but the other thing his character encompasses is his demeanor which is based off of like an Italian mobster lives in New York or Brooklyn or whatever and the way he acts is very similar to a gangster like in those terms and so me, that was me going back and forth trying to get a feel for how I need to draw this panel because his head is facing down like he's nonchalantly like not trying to be intimidating but at the same time crazy intimidating I have trouble with his hand he's supposed to do like that like a a <laughs> thing Italians do where they put their thumb and their fingers together like one of those but decide not to do that and I go with a finger gun instead um, it's a little bit of foreshadowing of what happens in the last panel. Um, you'll notice that I shade um, my line art with black. A lot of art teachers will tell you not to do this, but unless you're drawing something realistically, like photorealistically, I, I say the two to that. You can draw and color however you want. Um, I think shading with black looks really good, um, especially if in a comic that's not colored in, but even so in a comic that is colored in or an illustration that is colored in. One of my favorite examples of the cartoon that is sh or a comic that is shaded in with black most of the time is over, gar over the Garden Wall um, by Pat McHale and that was art directed by Nick Cross if I'm not mistaken and Nick Cross uses black a lot in the show um, and it, what it does is it makes the colors pop um, the contrast, it ups the contrast basically and so, um, coloring things or shading things with black makes it not necessarily easier on the eyes, but it looks more concise, I think. And that's why I do it. Every now and then, if I think something doesn't deserve a hard black shade, I will shade it in on a layer with, um, on a different layer depending on what it is, I might use a bright blue or a bright purple and then set that layer to multiply um, which you might see in the next video and then I set that layer to multiply and it shades it pretty well um, Billy's looking a, li a little threatened he's getting nervous in the fourth panel which you could tell he's like shaking a little bit, his eyes look a little more sunken in He's so scared, he's sweating more, and he's basically pleading to Tony at this point. This panel was fun to draw. Um, Tony is reaching into his jacket to pull out something, uh, which you can kind of see in the sixth panel when he pulls out. It's a gun. Spoilers, it's a gun. Um, he's reaching into his jacket. And now 
now we begin the panel where he pulls it out. And this panel was a bit tougher to draw because in this fifth panel, you see Tony reaches into his jacket with his right arm, hand. And then in the sketch of the sixth panel, you can see that he's holding the gun with his left hand. And that just doesn't make sense, obviously, for continuity reasons. So I go over the light blue pre-sketch with another sketch in purplish and draw something that's a bit more concise with the, uh, the fifth panel and that makes a bit more sense anatomically. So Tony whips out the gut and he's got his left arm back like uh, kind of like he's preparing to shoot the gun. And this is my first time drawing the weapon, but I'm trying to make it look cartoony on purpose because it doesn't make much sense to to draw something realistically in a cartoon if it's a cartoon, right? Unless you're trying to draw attention to this one thing. Um, the mouth was a bit hard to draw. It was a bit too realistic and it didn't quite match up until I decided to do with like a you know, like he's gritting his teeth, preparing for the um, knockback of the gun when he shoots it. And now I'm drawing action lines. Um, kind of hard to see. I won't, uh, I, you know, I won't disagree that it's hard to see, but when I go into color, um, I don't merge any of the line layers. They're all individually labeled. So I have a easier time coloring in the lines that aren't necessarily supposed to be black. And now I'm just going in and adding more speed lines. And finally the dialogue. You can see I changed his name from Tony to Billy. And then from Chad to Tony. And to emphasize with dialogue what I like to do it's if it's supposed to be something kind of whispered, you know, make it smaller than the rest of the text. It doesn't necessarily have to be outside of the text box or um, not included at all. Uh, dialogue can be really essential to helping um, progress a story. You know, it's a little obvious, but um, the way the dialogue boxes are drawn can also be indicative of the story as well and the emotion that the comic is each panel shows you. Um, another thing that's important to keep in mind is when you're writing dialogue, um, kind of say it out loud to yourself while you're writing it. Get the feel for what you're, what you want your characters to say and how they're saying it. When I was drawing this and writing out the dialogue. I was actually saying everything to myself in the way I wanted the characters to say it, which helps you and me get the accent of the character correct. So they have a kind of a Brooklyn accent, so there's a lot of plural verbs, um, you know, like the I swears, that kind of thing, and cut off um, words like skating instead of skating and stuff like that. And that is it for this one. But you'll um, either tonight, if you're watching this the day this comes out, either the second part will come out tonight or it will come out later this week or even tomorrow. And let me know what you think. This was actually kind of difficult to draw or not draw, uh, record in, because it's my first time. Uh, and stay tuned for the second part, which is where I talk about color theory as I color in my, um, my comic. Everything's in the description below, like I said before. And yeah, thanks for watching.